Welcome back to Golden Rule Radio, your weekly recap of the precious metals markets. And the news that moves the markets. And that news, which Got is it. all that matters. Which we actually didn't bring a lot of today. <laughs> We're going to focus on the charts. Tori and Miles here, just glad that you're tuning in. And Miles, as always, let's start right off the bat with some chart analysis on gold. Gold. <laughs> what do we say about gold over the last couple of weeks? We... Um, <laughs> Caught a little off guard as gold is now broken above 1900. I knew it would come up here. I thought we'd see maybe a little bit stronger of a turnaround, which hasn't really happened. Just for fun, I kind of pulled out a couple other things. You know, what's the relative strength index showing us? Where's MACD, the moving average convergence divergence? What are some of the moving averages at? I kind of wanted to see where's the stopping. And before I do that, Tori, you've got some old charts from last year. So I'm going to actually ask you, according to, say, March-ish of last year when we were going through the show, where did gold stop there? Yeah, really similar numbers. Now, remember, we had some geopolitical tensions back then, but I want to remind the listener that when things really start to move and you're hoping for the pullback, it just may not happen until and when it finally exhausts itself to the upside. And that's where we're going to tap into your brain miles on what those numbers might look like. But back in February, end of January, right where we are right now, guess where gold was? It was about 1780. And we'll throw this chart up here. And we quickly, over the course of about three weeks, made our way to 1880. So there was the $100 move. Sound familiar? Like, know what, going from about 1720 to 1825 in December. Now we've gone 1825 to 1923 here so far in January. Well, that same thing happened. We, in a matter then of just one more short month, a little less than a month, we went from 1880 to retest that all-time high just under 2080. So that $200 move happened in just a few weeks with just barely an opportunity for anybody to catch that ride. And so I'm going to ask you this, um, seatbelts on, yeah, I'm saying we, but is this indicative of any similar type pattern to you? And where do you see this either bouncing against the ceiling versus coming back down and giving us an opportunity to step into the floor? Yeah, it's a great question. And and it's funny you brought those in today. Normally, Tori walks in here with kind of like a grimoire full of geopolitical events over the last week. Today, he walked in with four charts. And I said, oh, who made those charts? And he just laughed and showed them to me. And I said, who made those charts? And I'm like, these look like my charts. These aren't last week's charts. No, they're a year ago's charts. So He was very impressed. Uh, I will tell you that. Yeah, at, at I'm, I'm super impressed he, that you take the time to go back through stuff because I forget what I make the next day. I thought you were impressed by the quality of the charts. Oh, the charts are, of course, they're amazing. They're <laughs> glorious. That hasn't changed. But it's a really good point because you guys know who listen every week. One of the things, and in my mind, if I'm looking for analogy for the way I look at charts, I'm constantly looking for what I call the rungs on the ladder. Where is the price going to firmly plant its foot to climb up further or start to climb back down? How can we compress charts into kind of a single timeline and look for periods of time where you're going to see the support and resistance? The problem is, and when you look back at what happened last year, we look back at what happened just following COVID when we first broke that 2000 mark a couple years ago. And then, like you mentioned, these last year, when momentum takes effect and you get the volume and velocity of the general market behind it, it becomes irrelevant at that point. If you want the perfect kind of micro example of how that phenomenon can take place in a market, just look at Bitcoin. I mean, how quickly did Bitcoin go to 60,000 just out of nowhere when everybody was expecting pullback? So I am going to talk about the pullbacks because I am often looking for opportunities to get back into the market. But please understand, as I go through these charts, what I'm talking through are likelihoods and probabilities and possibilities. But the reality is, is from time to time, the general public just takes over a market and it all becomes irrelevant. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity to see these numbers because I want the listener to understand what we're looking at and what we're hoping for, not predicting, right? We're not experts at predicting, but we are uh, very good at telling you if, then, right? So if right. we see that pullback, then expect these numbers to be an area of pause, support to the downside, and good entry points. And it doesn't mean you have to back up the truck and put everything in, but 
it would be nice. What does go up eventually comes down. It doesn't come all the way back down. So tell us, where does it come down to? Sure. We talked about this 1900 mark last week, which we're now at and slightly above. What I'm really liking here, I kind of dusted a few things off. So we'll go through these one at a time because I'm going to add a number of things to the chart here to take a look at. So the first thing we'll look at here is our 1900 mark, which we're now bouncing around. I had some reasons for drawing that on there based on some price action in the markets going back to March, April of last year when we were hitting those highs, kind of where was the floor of that trading range. Well, at the same time, when you look at the move back down, now we're going to add in the Fibonacci correction levels, and we have come right into a very deep 786 retracement back up. So the 786 retracement is sitting right at 1925, which we did scrape here in the last couple of days. So we've got a couple indicators, both from a pricing standpoint uh, and the Fibonacci numbers that tell us you should see some downwards momentum. But hey, I've said that before over the last couple of weeks. On top of that, we're significantly above, let's add a couple more things to the chart, your 40-day moving average, which is kind of a short-term snapshot of the last month or so, which is down around 1811. We're significantly above that 40-day moving average, which is not out of the ordinary to happen, but you do like and expect things to trend back to kind of their averages over time. But looking at a much longer term moving average, the 200 day moving average, which is about a year of trading days or you know less than a year of trading days, we're significantly above the 200 day moving average, which is down in the 1775 range. In fact, the last time we went this high above the 200 day moving average was, uh oh, March of last year where we ended up seeing gold take that big parabolic move up. So I brought a couple more indicators in here down at the bottom, the relative strength index. I just wanted to see if there was any divergence. You know, did we have price rising while the RSI was starting to fall? And believe it or not, we don't, at least on the daily. We do on the shorter time frames in the charts, but we don't on the daily, which tells me that even though we're in quote unquote oversold position, Gold isn't really still oversold yet. And then finally, the one thing that does say reversal along with the moving average is the moving average convergence divergence, the MACD, which again hasn't been as high as it is now since March of last year. So almost everything, despite what my history and instinct and in looking at charts say, Almost everything is kind of hinting we actually could go higher in gold in this move. Well, and you're not alone in saying that. I mean, we have to use multiple resources, and I've seen a real pivot in opinion of some other technical analyzers, if you will, and you and I haven't spoken about this, so as much as I've been hoping for that pullback, it hasn't happened, has it happened, and you start to gain momentum. People don't even know why they're jumping on the bandwagon. They don't have to be looking at fundamentals and charts. They just see the price moving and they don't want to miss out. And that's a real phenomenon, right? So they start jumping on. What we are missing this time, though, is the catalyst that we had last March. Gold and silver, for that matter. It ain't March yet. It ain't March yet. That's right. <laughs> so We're not looking for we'll see what happens but, this March. But last March, that was actually witnessing the gold price being down and flat. And to me, we were going to continue that downward trend because interest rate hikes were about to start. And the dollar rallied and end of story, right? For the next six months, we saw nothing but price declines in the precious metals. However, that big pop in March was a geopolitical based pop. And you even put it in that chart about how news events will change the velocity at which you end up reaching the ultimate price point. It may not change the price you reach, but it'll change the velocity. That's what we're missing. So is there going to be a catalyst that takes gold from 1920 to 2020 and 2120? I want everybody to understand that those $200 moves can happen very, very quickly. But yeah, there's tension out there. Think about Japan and China building tension. North Korea, South Korea, with everything the North is doing now. Iran and Israel. Israel talking about attacking Iran if they do further nuclear development. Russia and Ukraine. Russia and NATO. China and Taiwan. Like, these are all legitimate front page 
headline tensions that at any given point, one little news event away and gold does take off. So enough about that. What about silver? Yeah, I think it is important to bring silver in here because one thing I've been hinting at the last couple of weeks is I think silver might actually be leading gold in the markets. What we're seeing in silver, I kind of pointed out what could be building this rising channel in silver, but silver is actually doing some reversal-like actions that we're not seeing in gold. We had RSI, I mentioned with the gold chart, RSI doesn't really show like it's significantly overbought or showing any kind of divergence, starting to push down, hinting at lower gold prices. Well, we actually started seeing that take place in silver back in like December. So we are starting to see RSI roll over, where the moving average convergence divergence that we looked at is still way on the upside for gold. It's actually come back down to almost even with silver, with silver kind of evening out here in price. Also, the January 16th high we just put in before it came down, it failed to get above the January 3rd high. So we're starting to see some rolling over action in silver, and we're right at the bottom of that trading channel. I think by the time this recording goes live tomorrow, we'll probably already be below it. So silver, I think, could actually be hinting at lower pricing. Your 200-day moving average is right in line with the 50% retracement level, which is at around 2120 on the spot price. So that's where I'm going to be targeting. If we see a breakdown in silver Thursday or Friday of this week, I'm going to be targeting at least a couple bucks down on silver for this move. And listener, you've got to be prepared for that and you have to actually welcome that. When you get this big of a separation from that 200-day moving average, at one point, we were 15% above the 200-day moving average. Then go look at a 10-year chart of the 200-day moving average and the silver price, and you'll see that when it disconnects, it goes back to connect. Even though the trend line is up, to me, that's still a good indication that, yes, at some point, when you have a 40% rally from the bottom to a new high in the cycle, how can you not expect some of it to pull back, take a breather, build some potential energy and turn it into kinetic as it takes back off to the upside. And finally, in the metals today, platinum is kind of doing the same thing silver is, just a little bit more aggressively. Platinum has come back down to its 40-day. It's got a long way to go to the 200-day, just like silver, but I think there's a good chance it's on its way down there. I mentioned this top-end kind of multi-year trading channel that in the long term probably wouldn't have too, too much of effect on the market, but in the short term it will, and lo and behold, in the short term it has. Platinum's actually put eight consecutive down days in now and has come down from around 1100 to 1040. So not a significant percentage move, but it is sort of chipping its way down. Like silver, I think there's a good chance we see platinum come down to where the Fibonacci retracement levels just happen to line up with the 200-day moving average. And in silver, it was the 50% line. Here in platinum, it's a little deeper, the 618. So if we're going to see platinum come down, which I think is pretty likely, uh, unless we see a good turnaround in the next day or two, I'd expect platinum down at around 940, maybe as a bottom over the next couple of weeks. And talk about drawing the bowstring back both on silver and platinum. And I really would like it if gold would do the same thing too over the next couple of weeks because then we get into the February and Fed announcements and interest rate rises, and then a month after that, it's March. And for some reason in the 2020s, we've decided March is the month where everything has to fall apart. <laughs> well, so maybe we, have, maybe we have that next panic kickoff this March. I sure hope not. Well, I'll tell you what probably isn't going to be a catalyst between now and March was seeing some significant change, and that is the Fed pivoting. I don't see the Fed no. pivoting. They're going to raise rates in February. And Powell has come out and said either he has the best poker face or he's dead serious in that they are not changing course and they will not be lowering rates at all in 2023, right? If they were to do that, they would recatalyze this inflationary cycle that we're in. They have to be very, very careful. All this work would be for naught. And every time they talk about even a pause, 
the equities swell, right? Everybody jumps on the stock market bandwagon. Don't buy it. When you start seeing Wall Street saying that they're bullish on stocks, sell your stocks. When right. they start saying that they're optimistic about inflation having a significant downturn, don't believe them. Buy metals because that's exactly what we're starting to see. The, the equities start to rally. And I'll tell you what is likely not a catalyst either is some significant U.S. dollar rally. Right now, talk about rolling over. We dip below 102 on the dollar index. That trend yeah. continues. So the dollar index has actually shifted back below its 200-day moving average pretty significantly. 200-day moving average is up around 107. We're down around 102. Last time that happened when we shifted on the upside was back in May of 2021. And that entire move up was, uh, I believe, about 28%. But the time before that, when we shifted to the downside, was a couple years prior to that when the dollar started coming down from the previous 104, and that whole move down was like 13, 15%. We're already down 11, and we've just barely broken through this. It's pretty rare when the dollar makes a major moving average move above or below and starts moving consistently either up or down. Despite the interest rate rises, there's a lot of argument that actually the purchasing power of the dollar continues to go down. And this gets into the longer conversation we had a couple of weeks ago about the other things we need to see happen. It can't just be rising interest rates. It has to include the Fed balance sheet. It has to include government spending and overspending. You know, it can't just be raising interest rates. Raising interest rates crushes you and me. But the government just keeps printing money. They don't care. They don't care if it's 0% or 1% or 5% or 10%. They're going to raise the debt ceiling here in the exactly. coming months. Yep. So, and until those things start changing, I don't think it's going to make any difference. And that's just going to do more damage to the dollar long term until Powell can get rates to scary Volcker levels. I totally agree. And that's why I say stay the course. Now, you know, if we fall far below that 200-day moving average in the dollar again. Same thing that I was saying about the silver disconnect above the 200-day. When it drops that far below, even if that trend line is declining, at some point you'll come back up to meet it. It just always happens. So maybe you will see a little dollar rally coinciding with that pause in the gold price or that slight turn down. I do think that everything's shaping up to go set higher highs, record highs, uh, as long as exactly what you just said. Those deep underlying fundamentals, the causes of the broken markets don't change, then of course we're going to go set higher highs. It's built in. And in the meantime, I know this show talks a lot about charts and the spot prices, but keep in mind it's all about ratios too. What I'm encouraged about is the gold to silver ratio has gone from 74 to now 81 today on silver's little rollover and gold holding steady. Are we setting ourselves up for another rally in the gold-silver ratio where we go back into the high 80s, into the 90s? Those are excellent trading opportunities. Right. But you have to own the metals in advance in order to take yeah. advantage. Don't focus on spot price. Focus on ratio. Let us help you in structuring your precious metals portfolio. And that will be a balance of platinum, gold, silver, and at some point even palladium. So that's going to do it this week for Golden Rule Radio. As always, we appreciate you stopping by. Do the YouTube things, subscribe button and bell. Uh, better yet, why not head on over to our website, McIlvaney.com, where you can find more information about Golden Rule Radio, McIlvaney Weekly Commentary, our precious metals company, and maybe even get connected with one of our advisors. How about a better step than that? Give us a call. We can be reached at 800 525 95 Five, six, if you'd like to speak with one of the advisors personally about your precious metals portfolio. We can also be found on Facebook at McIlvaney Financial and Twitter at ICA Gold. Thanks for listening. Have a great week.